Can online instruction work? Today we are at episode 5 of our 12 episode series and we feature Hannes and Kim. Four brave volunteers have been chosen to test out the next generation of golf instruction, which is video instruction. This may be the cheaper option, but is this still viable? Sure, it may be insightful to get the information, however, you typically pay for the experienced coach to work with you on the physical communication, which to me is 90% of the lessons. Let's see how our volunteers are doing this week as this is their halfway mark of the journey. If you like this type of content or enjoy learning about cause and effect of the golf swing, help support the channel by liking, commenting, sharing, or even subscribing as we donate profits from this channel and our development academies to the Heal the Hood Foundation to introduce low-income children to golf in South Africa. But enough of that Vaseline on your club face. Get ready for the swings of our great volunteers. <music> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Lion Golf Academy. Welcome back. And I would like to say a quick thank you to all the new subscribers out there. Your support really means a lot to me and a lot to these kids that we're going to help out too. So on the screen, we have Hannes. Hannes, thank you for clearing up your name last time. And you would think I would know because I'm from Johannesburg, so it makes more sense now. But Hannes, new swing is on the right side with the gray shirt. Old swing from the last video is on the red shirt. We had Hannes stand a little bit further away with his feet and then also get his hands a little bit more connected. So let's take a look at how we're doing. And we're going to first check that centeredness so from the center up versus now we're going to look at the center up on the right side of the screen we can see that it is getting closer to your intersecting point so i really like this setup on the right side we try to correct you to get a little bit more spacing for you to get your left shoulder to tilt under so you don't feel so cramped now let's see if that can hold true now no last time we saw the arms getting away from that lower plane line pretty quickly and we're losing our shoulder tilt we can see how it's not tilting around it's almost leveling out and let's take a look on the right side do we get that corrected you can see it's definitely closer we can draw a nice little circle around the club head and the hands let's back it up to about where they are so what is happening now is the arms are not falling outside of your body they're actually trying to stay more connected to your body they're hanging down in a more, in a more natural position however unfortunately we can see that left shoulder is still coming a little bit out of its posture let's go all the way back on your old motion you can see your shoulder tilt definitely lost some tilting and they were flat out which causes this unusual laying off position with your club let's take a look at the new position we can see is it getting a little bit better pause it right about there and we can see there's the shoulder tilt so the shoulder tilt it's still getting a little bit left shoulder up now what that'll do is it actually flattens out your spine angle so your new spine angle you can see if we connect these up you're kind of flattening out now the club head picture this the club head will always try to find your shoulder tilt so that makes sense without getting in too much detail so if we draw a line from your shoulder on the, on the old swing versus the shoulders on the new swing if you just extend that line a little bit we can see that it is trying to find your shoulder tilt now if you steepen your shoulder tilt so if we get that left shoulder to tilt around your red axis which is this line here it's now long purple axis but if you can get it to be perpendicular to that your club head will try to follow that shoulder tilt so i hope that makes sense now where i see you starting to lose this is yes you've done a great job of giving yourself a little bit more room to work through impact so you can start to tilt but where you start losing this is that initial takeaway so let's back you up and let's see if notice how your arms pick up now a combination of things are happening it's not necessarily a rolling of your hands because your club face and the spine angle are pretty neutral to each other so that long purple line and that short club face line they're lined up together so it's not a rolling of the arms it's not necessarily a picking up of the arms it is your shoulder tilt your left shoulders coming out of its posture and that's forcing the hands and arms to raise up significantly early that can do a couple things for you it can start to limit your turn it can limit your depth that's the biggest thing though so that left shoulder needs to feel like it's working down towards that right knee and you are looking at halfway this is about halfway when the club is parallel to the ground and we know that because we can just see the club face and your hands you're looking for them to be closer to this bottom plane line and we're not going to do that just by pulling our arms closer we do that by getting our left shoulder to tilt down it's going to feel like you are increasing your tilt but remember in the golf swing feel is not real because your neutral position is right now however you are losing shoulder tilt so for you to fool yourself
yourself, you have to feel like your left shoulder is dipping down to your right knee. What you will feel in your body is you should feel the left lat muscle really stretching and feel like there's tension storing up. Then we know you are getting turn and tilt and you are remaining in your posture. Okay, so I left some of the major lines up here. We're gonna add two more lines. We're gonna put box around your head and I want you to see how we know at home if you are also watching this and you have this problem is also look at your head height because immediately we can see your head pulling up and out of that box. You're basically starting to stand up and you can see how much you moved out of that box. So your box has moved about three inches back and a few inches up. So that's loss of spine angle because your left shoulder is not staying true to that tilt, which is why it was so important for you to get that extra spacing between your upper body and your lower body by moving your feet back, supporting the back of your hips. So now you have the room to tilt. So your assignment for next week is you have to get this tilt done. You cannot go further unless this tilt is done because at the top of your swing, we can see some similar positions between the old move and the new move. But let's take a look at impact just to see a sneak preview. Let's look right here. So we see that you do find a way to work that club back around, but this is a compensatory move. And I don't want you to have as big of a compensatory move because we can see you still wind up in a similar position. But what is cool that you'll notice is right at impact. Let's look at that rotation here. We can see the left leg. We can see the right leg. Right at impact here, we can see less. Of, and I know we're wearing black on black, but we can definitely see less rotation with the lower body. You're staying more true to your spine angle. We can see you're still on that back brace line, which is great. That side of the screen, you've kind of hunched up into it. So we definitely see less hunching at the ball at impact, which is all a great sign. Look at the amount of spacing of your back on the left side of your, your spine angle line versus the right side. We don't see much of that. So you're staying more over the golf ball. So your compression is probably a lot better. And this is the hardest thing to convey when we're doing this type of lesson without me physically putting you there and asking you for the feedback so you can learn what it feels like. Because I'm basically telling you guys, go do this, see you next week. And that's not fair to you. So that's the one thing I caution about these online lessons is your intentions are there, but usually you have to fool your body by putting yourself in such an exaggerated position. You can gain the feel to make that difference. Hope that helps you. Let's see who's next. All right, next on the screen is Kim. Kim, that looks like a pretty gnarly weather storm behind you. Hope you were good. Hope you were safe, but let's take a look at your swing now. I know that Kim, we worked on getting your arm position a little higher, maintaining your posture during your swing. And let's see if we can be ready for the next step, which is really to help you not lean so far left as you strike the golf ball to help your weight transfer. So let's take a look at the left side of the screen and we see that club now. That is pretty nice as we get to the top of the swing. Yes, look at that shoulder tilt. It's tilting under. So that's really good. And look at that club face. The club face is pretty close to that spine angle. So this is actually a really good takeaway. How's your spacing? Your spacing's pretty good. You see that center of your heels up. It's pretty close to that intersecting point. So it's not too bad. Maybe pull the heels back slightly one or two more inches just to get you that little extra room of spacing. Right side of the screen. Let's take a look at your weight back. And we can see you staying right against that brace line. That looks pretty solid there. Let's take a look up a little bit too much rotation. And that's what gets you tipping to the wrong side and you kind of lean into it. You know, this is the biggest thing I see in your swing that can prevent you from being a little bit more consistent is that lean and then that throw with the hands because all you've basically done is taken that ball position. If we draw a straight line, you can see it's connected to the center of your chest, which is great. Once you get that lean into the target, you have shifted that ball position off your right shoulder, inside of your right shoulder there, and your hands have to, they have to start throwing early to catch up or else you'll just top the ball and you won't hit anything. So that casting or the throwing of the hands, obviously, if you have great timing, which it looks like you have pretty good timing, but if you want to improve your ball striking and also control your distance, because I can imagine when your hands are involved, you can absolutely destroy the cover of the golf ball sometimes. But then other times you might catch it off the toe of the heel. It doesn't quite make contact as precise as we, as I can imagine you do. So let's talk about how we can eliminate that little slide. So at the top of your swing on the left side of the screen, great set here. Club is down by that lower plane line. It tries to get to the top. We can see that the left arm plane, the shoulder is doing phenomenal. But if you can get those arms to be slightly higher, that would be ideal to help kind of get some of this weighting of the club head to be more up here or maybe even connected with that back brace line. That's the goal to get that club head right about that back brace line for you. It's not necessarily the way you set your wrist. It's just where that club face is. So try and raise the arms up, feel like that club face is going more to the sky. And what might help you is take a look at the right side of the screen. Look at how far back you go, right? We don't need this much turn, even though it's nice to have. You do a fairly good job of keeping that club short of that tee. What happens to you is look at the weighting of your 
your body so you can see that waiting right there you see how you start tipping on the left side when you go that deep and the club is that low it's going to pull your weighting towards your target in this direction now you've started the momentum so remember the backswing is position based the downswing is always momentum based and you want to control where that momentum goes and right now you are controlling the momentum to top heavy you into the target which means the upper body is going to start leaning over the wrong way and then you just start leaning and then you have to flip so i would like to see your backswing stop right there that is solid because now you see that the rotation of your shoulders we've limited the rotation slightly but what we've done is look how your hands are right in front of your chest where if you go back a couple frames they start scooping back behind your chest and that is partly throwing to get you back out front but you've already leaned forward so you have to throw even more so if we can get you to stop right there now i'm going to warn you this is probably the hardest thing to do is to stop your arm swing it's not necessarily your shoulders it's keeping your arms out in front of your chest the best way i do this is take a ball a basketball works great put it in between your biceps at your setup no club needed make sure you grip it like you were holding a club though and just basically turn feel like the arms are going up a little bit higher for you but wherever you stop turning you can't get your arms to go back any further because that basketball prohibits that turn do that hundreds of times and then when you want to introduce it to the golf course which in your case is the range take that basketball with you do about 10 to 15 dry slow swings without a club without anything then do a couple of swings without a golf ball but a club in your hand and get that same feeling and then try and hit a golf ball make sure your speed when you hit that golf ball is 50 percent or slower because the moment you pick up speed your old neurological system and habits kick in and it becomes almost impossible to change this so a warning for everybody that's working on the golf swing you have to take less golf ball swings and more dry swings without a golf ball to get the body to start to learn the feelings and then slowly introduce it to your golf ball swing so if you can come back in your next video get these hands a slightly bit higher but also get your arms out in front of your chest and stop right there that's all you need and then from there we can start to work on driving with your hips first let your upper body stay back so we don't have this lean and then you're throwing i think that's really going to help you great job by the way but this week's a big challenge for you it's all feel and feel is so hard to teach without me being there putting you in the positions and asking you for your feedback because again feel isn't real ladies and gentlemen hope that helps you if you like that hit that like and subscribe and i will see you next time ferris and greens